Arab Tov Chabrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and our broadcast this evening is Damascus the next target of the U.S. led coalition. And as frightening as that may sound, or even as alarming that may sound, it may give uh, some heavy credibility from an article that's published by RT. Let's take a look at this and really begin to unravel this evening's news and, and the things that are happening all around Syria. Of course, many of you, I'm sure, are already thinking about Damascus and the ruinous heap from Isaiah chapter 17. This on your screen and behind you here, RT, published only hours ago, uh, state here, direct aggression by U.S. against Damascus to cause tectonic shift in the Middle East. Now, we're going to be looking at the propaganda once again this evening that's being fed but, uh, to the United States people uh, regarding Syria, but we're also going to be look at, looking at later in the broadcast here that Israel may also be preparing for a U.S. led, uh, U.S. coalition led strike on Damascus because one thing we have not brought up and we've not shared much images about this to start with has been a massive number of tanks and troop movement to the Golan by Israel, something we witnessed when we went to Damascus not too long ago, or overlooking Damascus from the Israeli border there. Uh, reported on several things there, but I didn't go too much into what we actually saw there, mainly for the safety and security of the Israeli people. Uh, but in light of this article here, I think we have seen the evidence of Israel also getting ready, knowing that their partners, the United States, may very well lead a strike against Damascus directly. Uh, this could destabilize the Golan Heights with Hezbollah and open up a war front for Israel as well. So Israel, I believe, has been preparing for such attack. Let's take a look at this. October the 1st came out today, and this here is... Uh, I brought first the scripture, but the, uh, the words underneath there is from the direct article itself off of RT News. It was published today. But the burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Taken away from being a city. It's about the only city left that is not being besieged by different fighting factions all across Syria that the U.S.-led coalition has been sponsoring to try to topple Bashar al-Assad. But it seems to be the last city that is a stronghold. But the prophecy also, in, uh, clearly in Isaiah, is going to speak about something that's going to happen to Israel as well. We'll look at that in a moment here. Let's continue with RT's report here. If the U.S. launches a military campaign to oust the Syrian government, it would further fracture the country and have tremendous negative long-term consequences for the entire region, Russian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova warned. Uh, she said, if the U.S. launches a direct aggression against Damascus and the Syrian army, it would cause a terrible tectonic shift, not only in the country, but in the entire region. Maria Zakharova uh, said during a talk show, which is to be aired, uh, fu uh, aired fully later on Saturday and has been cited by RIA, RT News, etc. There, RT, actually RIA, RT News is the one that covered the article here. Let me show you what else uh, Ms. Uh, Zakharova uh, had to say here, she says, with no government in Damascus, there will be a power vacuum in Syria. Kind of reiterating the words by John Kerry, a, a vacuum would be filled uh, by these radical groups, but he doesn't mention the fact that the U.S. backs all these radical groups, which so-called moderates who are re in reality not moderate at all, but just terrorists of all flavors would feel and there would be no dealing with them the diplomat predicted. And later, it would be uh, aggravated the way it happened in Iraq. We know that Saddam Hussein's Iraqi army be uh, became the basis of the Islamic State. Everything that both the U.S.-led coalition and Russia are fighting now stems from it, uh, Mrs. Zakharova said in this article here, direct aggression by U.S. against Damascus to cause tectonic shift in the Middle East. So, is, it, is Russia expecting this type of an attack on Damascus? And if so, how heavy will Russia get involved? And if Russia really gets heavily involved over Damascus and the toppling of Bashar al-Assad, as they have been pretty much involved and not back down nor flinched uh, over Aleppo, uh, then I am sure Damascus will be no different. Uh, let me continue on. I want to share with you some very interesting facts, though, that clearly indicate that the Obama administration is really there for a very evil purpose in the Middle East. 
We see here in the article here, this here again is on RT as well. Americans are on our side. And Al Nasser commander says uh, U.S. Army jihadists via third countries. Published uh, time, to, it was, or excuse me, it was published uh, on the September 26th. RT News covered it. It was actually a German article that this came from uh, where they were interviewing the man you see on your screen. He says, the fight is difficult. The regime is strong and gets support from Russia. He explains, speaking about Damascus or, or President Bashar al-Assad. El Ez said that uh, Jehabat al nursa won battles thanks to tow rockets, T-O-W, rockets. Due to these rockets, we reached a balance with the regime. Our tanks came from Libya via Turkey, joined by the BM-21 multiple rocket launchers, he said. The government forces have an advantage because of aircraft and missile launchers, but we have the American-made tow missiles, and the situation in some areas is under control, Al Ez added. Now, I might bring out as well, the United States has denied backing Al Nursa here and have denied the claims that are being made in this particular article by RT and the interview that was done by German media. But clearly, an Al Nursa, which is basically nothing else than Al Qaeda, are, are stating emphatically that the U.S. government is backing what they're doing and is continuing to arm them. And we also mentioned in our broadcast. Uh, either yesterday or the day before yesterday, that the United States, since John Kirby's famous statement that Russians will continue to go home in body bags, and I, I kind of find it ironic that no one has really picked up on the word continued, which, as I stated before, only shows that the United States is very much knowledgeable that there were Russian forces killed in uh, Del El Zor in eastern Syria when the supposed uh, accidental attack on Sir the Syrian army left not only 62 Syrian soldiers dead, but also about a dozen Russian commandos were killed and Iranian forces as well were killed in that attack. Um, continuing on, though, uh, in this same article here, uh, where the jihadist group, al Nursa are claiming that they are being backed by the U.S. Watch what he says here. When asked if the tow missiles were initially intended for a uh, excuse me, Jabhat al Nursa, or if the group attained them from the moderate free Syrian army, the jihadists clarified, no, the missiles were given to us directly. Now, here's a man fighting, saying that they're being supported by the United States. And of course, the United States is denying it. But we're going to go into just a moment here. Again, a, a brand new source, by the way, we're no, we're, but we will be also sharing uh, with you uh, another source here in a, in a moment, totally different. Uh, uh, Ms. Beely, a journalist that has been there as well, that goes into these issues here. She did it on Ron Paul's uh, Freedom uh, Program. We're going to share a little bit of that interview with you. But as it goes on here, when, when asked if the tow missiles, he said no. The missiles were given to us directly. He goes also said he also said that when the Jihabat al Nursa was besieged, we had officers from Turkey, Qatar, Arabia, Israel, and America here, experts in the use of satellites, rockets, reconnaissance, and thermal security cameras. The journalist asked specifically if the U.S. instructors were really present among the jihadist ranks, and Al Ez replied, "The Americans are on our side." He also said that Jabhat al Nursa has been paid for achieving specific military goals during the Syrian conflict. That does kind of also line up with the attack that was done by the U.S. coalition on the Syrian army because Russia is claiming that the Syrian army was intentionally attacked as well as their, the, the Russian commandos that were fighting there with them in order to give ISIS an upper hand in taking closer to the, uh, the airfield that the Syrian army has been using in the eastern province there. Now, we reported ourselves, and uh, as you can see on the screen there, this is our video that we did on uh, YouTube, our Israeli News Live broadcast, Urgent Breaking News, Russia Strikes Back. We are at war, 222,000 views already on that a week ago. But in this one here, in this article, when we published this report here, we were using... Uh, the article from the Arabic Sputnik News, uh, which I translate that from Arabic, is caliber missiles targeted a foreign military leaders in Darat Izat province of Aleppo. These, this, and, and what's funny though, this man right here, he is clearly stating, this is Al-Ez, he is clearly stating that there were what? 
officers from Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and America that were there at the time that they were receiving these weapons. And then we find out on September the 20th, when Russia strikes back, which I really believe was in retaliation for the attack that the U.S.-led coalition did, uh, the aircraft strike, uh, according here on September 17th, uh, RT covered this, strike Syrian army positions killing 62 soldiers is actually much higher than that because of the Russians and the, and the Iranians that were killed as well. But Russia retaliated because why? According to the Syrian government, they had intel, radio intercepted calls there to where in Aleppo, eastern Aleppo, which is where they claim that the several U.S., Turkish, Saudi, Qatari, and British officers were also killed along with the Israeli officers. The foreign officers were killed in Aleppo operations room directing the terrorist attacks in Aleppo. That's what it said on the Arabic language Sputnik news source. Another source there goes into saying that they were high in the mountains there and Russia targeted them uh, in order to put a stop to where the information was coming from to be able to attack the Syrian army. This is why we stated in our own broadcast right here, we are at war. Even though, as, um, as we've seen with what John Kirby said from the State Department, there will be more, you know, these rebel groups will be, uh, may attack Russia, they may attack Russian interests, they may attack even Russian cities. Clearly, from the way John Kirby is speaking about that from the State Department, although it is a veiled threat, not a direct threat against Russia, they have carried out, or they will continue to carry out these threats here because what's going to happen? It is definitely a proxy war at this point now. But let some planes fall out of the sky. And I'm afraid it'll go from a proxy war to a direct conflict. When the U.S. coalition struck the Syrian army and killed Syrian and Russian forces, that's a direct conflict there. Although they're using on the ground the radical Islamic ISIS group, al-Nursa, the jihadists, Free Syrian Army, all the others, still it is a direct attack at that point there. Let's move on now. Again, like I said, it was in retaliation of the 17th, September 17th uh, strike that, that happened on the Syrian Free Army there. Uh, that was what Russia did in retaliation. Still has never made mainstream media in America. Why? Just like Russia doesn't want to admit that they had commandos killed in the attack by the U.S.-led coalition, neither does the United States, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Qatar, any of the rest of these, or even the British want to admit that they had intel officers working inside of Aleppo. If they admitted it, then the rest of the world would know that in fact these different governments are working together. Turkey is definitely not an ally to Russia. As we've stated all along, we believe the coup was orchestrated by the CIA in order to get Turkey to get their own forces on the ground inside Syria. Fake a coup in order to get Russia to feel sorry for Turkey, for Erdogan, and then turn around and, well, you know the rest of the story, bring in the troops there. And the uh, Jarbala, which was all a lie by Turkey, they had targeted the Kurds, and America says they're allies to the Kurds. If I was a Kurd, I'd never trust the American government right now, especially the Obama regime. Uh, when it comes to a different government, maybe it'll be better, but under Obama or even uh, Clinton, it would not be good. Let me share with you, though, a little bit of information here. This is from, the next one here is from uh, journalist Vanessa Bealey, who has been on the ground in Syria. She's been there in Aleppo. She has seen what's going on. Uh, this was on the Ron Paul Liberty Report. Uh, uh, Ron Paul was not in. Uh, another one of his anchors there was, was were, were interviewing this uh, incredible journalist here, but she really gives a, a perspective of what's going on in the ground and how we are being lied to. The propaganda that we're being fed is just really overwhelming. And then again, we'll go back to Dr. Henry Lowendorf. Listen to Dr. Henry Lowendorf once again. By the way, he is with the Greater New Haven Peace Council. Uh, that was also part of the delegation that went to Syria for a fact-finding mission to see is it really true what the Obama administration is telling the rest of the world or are we being lied to? Well, it turns out we're being lied to. Listen to this here and I'll pull up close here so we can get a better sound of the audio. Anthony, who is the real educated and funded leader of Jaish al-Fassa, the armory of conquest, chief trainer of suicide bombers and chief um, terrorist, funder, armor, and, and, and um, you know, um, 
Executor. Sounds like a nice guy. You know, for anyone who, <laughs> for anyone who might suggest that you're 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 being a little emphatic with your words, using calling the East Aleppo terrorist, I would simply remind our viewers that Colonel Steve Warren, who's a Pentagon spokesperson, uh, said not long ago that Eastern Aleppo is in the hands of the Nusra Front, which is Al Qaeda, mm -hmm. which we all recognize as terrorists. Uh, they had something to do with something that happened in the U.S. on 9-11. Yet somehow it seems that the U.S. is desperate to protect an area that its own government says is occupied and under siege by al-Qaeda terrorists. You know, you can, you can forgive the viewers for being confused about this. Absolutely. Yeah, and actually I, I can easily forgive the viewers. Trust me, even for me, someone that's been there and has been writing on this for, for, for ages now. Um, there's 22... I call them genetically modified terrorists because we can't call them moderates, we can't call them anything other than terrorists. And again, I, I have to stress here, that comes from every single Syrian person that I met across the governorates that I travel to. They do not even consider there is any differentiation between the terrorists. They are all criminals, they are all mass murderers, they are all rapists, they are all torturers, they are all abusers of their children and their families. And yesterday, in fact, um, you're quite right, 80% of those 200,000 people that are in East Aleppo have been described as being Nusra Front. Um, so, and, and yesterday, in fact, while the media was, was um, you know, amplifying and, and megaphoning the, camp, the, the propaganda that was being provided to them by the terrorist factions inside East Aleppo, mortars were being rained down upon civilians in West Aleppo. We had descriptions of it being like hell yesterday. Um, there was a okay. six-year-old child, Pamela, uh, let's get her name right. I want to stop at that point right there because this was part of something I wanted for you guys to be able to see as well. When she speaks about the, the, uh, the mortars raining down and they said it was like hell in Western Aleppo, this is what we have been looking for, is more of the evidence. We already know that Aaron Erdem clearly has the evidence that indicted um, with, with no questions asked, the West knew, the United States knew about uh, the smuggling in for ISIS, the sarin gas that was later used on um, the, the civilian population to be blamed on uh, Bashar al-Assad, President Assad. And then later we also find out Hirsch, uh, Herschel uh, another journalist out of uh, Britain uh, through different intel that he was able to uncover as well clearly uh, and uh, you know found the evidence that shows that there it was a pre-planned thing to use sarin gas in Syria blame it on Bashar al-Assad to be able to justify a ground war what threw things off was the United States didn't expect Russia to step in and start an air campaign against ISIS uh, and up until that point there, the United States has done very little to stop any aggression that was going against Bashar al-Assad. In fact, they were only doing the opposite. They were supporting all the aggression. Uh, and so bringing this up to what uh, Ms. Beely is saying here is that the, uh, the, the different terrorist groups there, al-Nursa, ISIS, all those different groups that are raining down, as she said, there's 22 different groups in the country that are fighting against Bashar al-Assad but they are raining down all these mortars on Western Aleppo. Uh, and then of course, as we have stated, we know that the United States has sold uh, uh, phosphoric, uh, phosphoric weapons to the Saudis. Saudis are working there inside, we're working there inside of Aleppo. So they could have easily got into the hands of these uh, groups as well. And not to mention, we also know that the, uh, the Turks as well have used phosphoric uh, weapons and have smuggled those in and have been backing ISIS all along. So the propaganda that we're fed in the West that it is Russia and the Syrian army that are actually doing the attacks on their people, we find from journalists like Ms. Beely right here, uh, Vanessa Beely, that actually contradicts that and shows that it's not Russia nor Bashar al-Assad that is attacking their own, the civilian populations, but in fact it is the groups that the U.S.-led coalition are backing uh, to try to topple Bashar al-Assad. They're targeting the civilian population and they're capitalizing on that through the media that is willing to lie to us. Uh, let me, again, let's, let's go to Dr. Uh, uh, Henry uh, Lowendorf. 
uh, from the Greater New Haven Peace Council who is also in Syria. And I, again, I, I just have to do this for this stressing because I'm going to show you the, one of the latest that Reuters is bringing out, but to show you again the propaganda that we are being fed in the West and all the other parts of the world well, as well. Is so true. We are fighting a mass of propaganda that has demonized the Syrian government, demonized its leaders, a, an effort that precedes every other intervention that the United States has made over the course of many, many decades in order to convince people that it's okay for quote-unquote humanitarian reasons to overthrow a government and to replace it with whatever. The United States prefers uh, a government that is not independent, that is a willing uh, participant. This journalist right here doesn't like what he says, you can tell, obviously. So what we saw in, in Damascus and what we saw in the two villages we visited outside Damascus belies the propaganda that has um, overwhelmed us. It's hard, it, it, it's hard for even those of us who have been in the peace movement for a long time. Let me just pause it there, and I might say too about the one journalist, it could be that he just doesn't realize that he's been lied to by other journalists. Uh, but that's exactly what's going on. And we're about to see Damascus become a ruinous heap if RT is right in suggesting uh, that uh, in the news broadcast they brought out from the uh, Russian foreign, foreign minister there, uh, or Russian representative there, Masakarov, that indeed the U.S. may strike Damascus. Uh, whether, whether it be directly or indirectly, it could still be a tectonic shift. Anything to get rid of Bashar al-Assad. But this is the type of propaganda we get. Here today, October the 1st, Reuters World News reports Russian jets pound Aleppo as U.S. cling to diplomacy. The U.S. clings to diplomacy? I mean, that's absurd to begin with. Russia works diligently to get John Kerry and Lavrov together to work out a ceasefire agreement that is broken mainly by all the different groups that the U.S. is backing in their coalition. And then on top of it, I mean, we are there overlooking Damascus the very day the ceasefire is broken and we carry live on live, Israeli News live stream. We're carrying that the ceasefire is being broken there at Damascus, not to mention the U.S.-led coalition strike the Syrian army inside of Del Azord, also breaking the ceasefire, because this is why Russia wanted to make it public what the ceasefire was all about, because it was also in the ceasefire agreement that there was to be no aerial campaigns, neither by Russia nor the U.S.-led coalition, no one. But yet, who broke that ceasefire? The U.S.-led coalition, and struck the Syrian army, claiming they were going after ISIS only to find out that these things were not true. But according to this here, uh, the, the, the title is what's so deceptive, but then it says Russia was reported on Friday to be sending more warplanes to Syria, ramp, ramp up its air campaign as the United States said it had not yet given up on fighting a diplomatic resolution. Diplomatic resolution? No, the United States is steadily under the Obama regime. I don't want to say it's the U.S. people. The U.S. people, believe me, are sick and tired of the wars that we have going on in Syria. And I'm sure many of our military personnel as well know that we should not even be there. Uh, but anyway, so I, this is more the propaganda that we are fed in the West, whether it be Europe, United States, etc., or just being fed lies one after another. Now, as I said, though, if... Uh, if what we found in the report uh, by RT that came out today, and let's just back up to that real quick and we'll come back to this here in just a second. But um, if Ms. Zakharova uh, is correct in what she, in her analysis, that the U.S., you know, that could be the next thing that happens is that they, as she said, in a ladder it would be aggravated the way it happened in Iraq. We know that, uh, let me back up, sorry. Uh, she says here, if the U.S. launches a direct aggression against Damascus and the Syrian army, it would cause a terrible tectonic shift not only in the country but in the entire region, Maria Zakharova said during a talk show which is to be aired fully later on Saturday. That will actually be airing tonight, probably already is airing at this time now. But um, So if, if she is correct, and let's say that that does happen, uh, then it might explain then why when we were up there in Damascus only a, only a couple of weeks ago, 
uh, near, right near the city of Damascus overlooking there, as we were going up, we saw an overwhelming amount of military equipment and movement by, by Israel. Uh, it seemed to me that it was being more placed for a protection of the Golan. Uh, we saw, and, and this here is only just one of many, 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 uh, uh, and, and many of those are in small convoys. You'll have three 18-wheelers with tanks headed to the north. Um, you, you know, you have it here on the left, a, a full tank here. This one here uh, looks like it might have to be repaired on there, but most of them were all fully intact, headed to the north, headed to the Golan. Uh, like we saw here, this was only one of many here, and I'm not going to mention where that's at for the safety of the Israeli people and Israeli uh, IDF soldiers, uh, but this, in the Golan, I can say that much to you, uh, just one of many there, and we've seen uh, what we would estimate in one area alone, uh, because of the number of the buses and knowing the capacity of the buses there, uh, we knew that the, the Israeli government had sent up probably close to a thousand uh, IDF soldiers up into the Golan as well. So what is all this movement about for Israel? Is it war games? Perhaps. I haven't investigated to see if they were doing a war game during the time, but it seems more to me that what Israel is doing is Israel is getting ready to protect its border from Hezbollah, uh, and it may be because Ms. Uh, Zakharova may be correct. The U.S. may be planning a, a, a direct attack on Damascus. Even if it's not done directly by the U.S., it could be done uh, through the different groups that they have fighting there, whether it be al-Nursa, al-Qaeda, uh, or al-Qaeda, or ISIS, or the moderate rebels, whatever they may be. Because as we reported ourselves, Damascus is definitely uh, surrounded, at least not surrounded, but to the east and to the north of Damascus, we were seeing fighting as we were there, especially to the east, heavy, heavy bombardment there, uh, shelling between uh, the Syrian army and the groups that are to the north and to the east of Damascus. So if they were to move down from Aleppo, any of these other uh, groups here, if, for example, if the Syrian government doesn't get control of Aleppo and these troops begin to go on the move, there could be a major conflict. And it may get to the point to where uh, the U.S. government, the Obama uh, uh, administration might, might decide that the only way to get rid of Assad is to have a direct conflict with Damascus. And of course, that will definitely bring about the scripture, the burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city and it shall be a ruinous heap. That would definitely make it a ruinous heap because if the U.S.-led coalition gets involved in there, those buildings will just crumble down to nothing. As we have already seen from all the bombing, even that Russia has done as well, Russia trying to get rid of uh, ISIS throughout the country, it has just laid entire cities to nothing but rubble. And of course, U.S.-led coalition as well, hitting different groups that they're uh, against uh, too, bringing down uh, just massive cities uh, in, in nothing but rebels. But I wanted to share with you though, a little bit more of the verses here because I think it's very important. The cities of Aurora are forsaken. They shall be flocks which shall lie down and none shall make them afraid. The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus and the remnant of Syria. They shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. Now keep this in mind. Damascus has never ceased from being a city. This is why this prophecy of Isaiah 17:1 is believed to, to still be fulfilled and could be very well fulfilled here in the very coming weeks. But he says in verse 4, chapter 17, this is what concerned me. And in that day it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin. Isn't it interesting that God refers to Israel as Jacob here? just as the rest of the world is doing. They don't want to acknowledge Israel as the state of Israel, but rather, they, they, as, as we know in Psalm 83, come let us uh, cut them off that the name of Israel be, may, may be no more in remembrance. So is this a, a sign to us as well that God refers to it, that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin? But here's the sad part of this. And the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. Could this war with Damascus have a heavy toll on Israel as well? That's my concern. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. I know it's been a little bit of a lengthy broadcast. Thank you for watching. Again, don't forget, subscribe, share this broadcast everywhere you can because Western media is not telling our people the truth. 
and we're in a, a battle of getting the truth out in a, in a world of global bias. Uh, also, don't forget if you like the prophetic teachings that we do, uh, join us on Danoon Institute on YouTube, as well as we're doing a new channel on news on Vimo under my name, Stephen Ben Noon. The links will be here in the subject line here for you to be able to click and sign up there. And also on Twitter, Israeli News Live at Stephen Denoon. It's the only one I could find available. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You have a great evening. Shalom.